This week in the field, a blast from the past, Seal Rock Beach from 2016. Hey everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In The Field. Thanks for joining me today. Yes, still sporting the sunglasses. You're curious why? Go check out my vlog post from last week. It explains the details and that explains why I haven't been out shooting locally at all really for several weeks. So I did want to put together a video though and dug into my archives and found footage from Seal Rock Beach. I visited this beach in Oregon back in 2016 and uh, the, uh, the backstory is I had intended to use part of this for, uh, for a, a training product. And I ended up having some audio issues with the recordings that were taken out in the field. The microphone died on me about halfway into the trip. But there's enough here that I think it's worthwhile sharing for an In the Field episode. And it's, it's a really nice piece of coast. So let me get you out to Seal Rock Beach and show you what it's all about. Doing a little scouting at Seal Beach. This is a, just a gorgeous stretch of coast here in Oregon. And uh, actually, I really have some nice, interesting skies, but I'm just gonna be marching around, doing a little handheld work, just to get some ideas on compositions. This will be one of the places I plan to come back for sunset and get myself nestled in, in and among some of these rocks and uh, get some of this, you know, just, <laughs> just gorgeous landscape into my camera. All right, let's get set up here glow out there is just awesome. So I certainly want that in the frame as well as the crashes of the stacks. I may need to move down the beach a little bit more and angle backwards but I want to keep some of that play in between there. These other foreground rocks might be an option. So there's uh, two things that are different from when I scouted here yesterday. Number one is the light. Light's always changing, so that's something I always have to account for. There's a nice glow at the horizon, which also suggests to me that the best light's going to be a little bit before sunset. I need to be able to work that into the shot. Now the second thing that's different is the tide. The tide's a little bit lower than it was the last time I was here, but it is starting to come in. I have to be aware of that. And having scouted the beach, I think I'm gonna move a little bit to the south and try and use some of those foreground rocks that are closer to the land. It will keep me a little protected from incoming tides. Not that this is rough seas or anything at all, but I can keep the gear dry, keep myself dry, and still come up with some really nice photos, but really working the sea stacks in with that glow on the horizon. I'm sailing on this spot here. This is giving me a great view of these really impressive sea stacks. I want to keep those several, like those three and four spikes showing up strong against what I'm going to count on becoming a glowing background. I'm, I'm going to rely on that to happen for me to really make this composition work. Got a little bit of action in the foreground, just some nice gentle swells of water, little streams. That's really just to provide some foreground context. I want the shot to be about this, you know, these, set, these sea stacks and this glowing backdrop. So hopefully that's going to come together for us. As the light's already getting dim because of these cloud cover, I'm metering at one tenth of a second for the shutter speed. So I'm not using any filters at all. There's uh, really no glare to control and I'm shooting more or less directly toward the sun. So the polarizer would only act as a neutral density filter. But since I've got this, uh, this lower shutter speed already, I'm not going to introduce anything else in the front element. May as well just get raw glass against this scene and just hope we get some, uh, some brightness back in that sky. Let me err on the side of being a little wider. I can always crop later on. So we get that focus point set. Excellent. All right, got a good glow on the right side of the frame. I've got my, my C stacks there, my three sisters. Really just need that sky to light up. Oh, come on, I wanna see that sun hit that, uh, hit that gap. And that will give us some really nice brightness. That'll add uh, a beautiful backdrop and nice amount of contrast here. What I like about this stretch of coast is Besides having great sea stacks and really interesting subjects to shoot, it's accessible at all but the most extreme high tides. I'm thinking like if there's a stormy situation, there might be an area that uh, you would get pinched off from uh, from you know escaping to drier ground. But that's going to be rare. And uh, pockets like that on the central and southern Oregon coast, uh, a little harder to find. Not impossible, of course. But there's much more of these uh, little nooks and you know coves where you need to be very careful about when you're going tide-wise. 
Seal Rock Beach, it's pretty much accessible no matter what's going on with the water. And uh, I think tip of the week, when I think about the photos that I captured from this beach, it's getting into the surf. Uh, certainly the, the photos I left with on that day, the ones that were more compelling to me, so when I had the tripod legs in the water and you know I'm standing in the water there with it. I mean, we're talking, you know, not even ankle deep, just, just enough where the tripod legs are wet. You get that water swirling around it. The foam starts to create lines if you drag the shutter for a quarter second or half second, that kind of stuff. Those just looked really, really nice. So don't be shy about getting the tripod in the water. I've got a different video. It tells you how to go clean your tripod afterward. It's not as bad as it sounds, and you'll have better photos for it. And that will wrap up today's In the Field video. Hope you've enjoyed it. A little trip down memory lane with me. If you've got questions about photography, you know the drill. Comments below. Hit me up through my website. Always love hearing from you what's on your mind photographically. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.